to drill a hole right through the plastic. Now I know this sounds a little scary, but it can be done. And you can see I, I've already done it. And then we just connect one tack to the next with a simple PVC pipe like this. Now, the only problem is, what do you think the problem's going to be here though with this? Leaks? Yeah, leaks! That's right! You got it! Okay, so what are we going to do? Okay, it, it's a uh, it's a bit of a struggle getting them in, but once you finally do, it looks something like this. So you can see the rubber boots connecting the two tanks. Now, the next thing you want to do is install the PVC pipe. It always makes it easy. You put a little lubricant on there. Anyway, you just slide this right in here. If you can see that. So I'm just going to slide this PVC pipe right through the rubber boot. Okay. There. Uh, now, can you see the uh, PVC pipe goes right through the rubber boot? This is what makes it watertight. How can we drill a nice round hole in this plastic tank? All right. Uh, in order to stabilize our saw hole bit while we're drilling, it's a good idea to uh, use a jig to, to hold it in place. Now this is, a, this is just one very simple jig that I, I'm, I'm showing you. It's just a piece of plywood with, a, with the hole already drilled out. But now we have to find some way of bonding this to the tank without drilling holes through it. So what I'm going to do, I just have some tape. So I'm going to put some tape right over it like this. Hold it nice and tight. Okay. I'm sure that there's many ways of doing it. I'm just showing you one very simple way. Okay. I'm not even sure if it's going to work or not. You think it's going to work? I don't know. Well, we'll see. Okay. It's a good way to find out if something's going to work. You just do it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's. Uh, that's my motto. Yeah. No. No, you're gonna. I've tried uh, a lot of different ways. There's so many different ways of doing things. I'm just showing you one way. Okay. All right. So we stabilized our uh, the uh, area where we want to drill the hole. This is a two and three quarter inch size hole. We line everything up nice. Okay. Now we're ready to go. support shield like this before you drill to stabilize the hole. So all you'd have to do is find some way of stabilizing. Now uh, we, we have two plugs in the 60 gallon tank and one plug has pipe thread so we can put this uh, this threaded male adapter uh, right in here and then connect some PVC and then a rubber boot to that. Okay? Uh, the, one of the reasons for the, uh, the rubber boots all over the place is to make this system very portable and easy to work with. Uh, now, this other plug, unfortunately, does not have pipe thread, so uh, we uh, put some gutter cement on it and tightened it down to make it watertight. This is the part that I like the best, because everything is uh, set up for uh, connecting. All we have to do is swivel. Uh, this connector like this. Remember, uh, we can adjust the height and we can also adjust the angle very easily. So, it's a simple matter to line this tank up with this one. We'll just press it right in into the uh, two inch rubber boot. Okay, and then we go to tank number two and connect it to tank number just like, like that. Okay. And now we can connect it. Connect uh, tank number three to tank number four. Okay, and once we're all finished uh, with our connections, 
then all we have to do is, is tighten up these uh, fittings with the clamp. Like this, like here, and here, and so on. So uh, we can make our heat storage system as large as we want. Uh, and the size really depends on the number of collectors that you're going to be using. So we know uh, the hot water will be coming in the first tank and the last tank uh, is where our pump would be located. So remember this this pipe here goes down to the bottom of the tank so this is the water that we're going to return to our collector. This will be the coldest water of the four tank system and we're going to take the water from the bottom of the tank so this will be the very coldest water that we have to offer our collector. No sense in returning hot water to a hot collector. You're not going to get much heat exchange that way. So this maximizes our heat exchange. Oh, what's this? Yeah, you're telling you. Uh, this is a very low cost bilge pump. Okay, and it's powered with a 12 volt source. So if you have a photovoltaic panel, all you do is you just, just put this in your last tank here. Tighten this up here. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and just tighten this up and uh, connect it to your differential thermostat. And as soon as, uh, as soon as it's warranted, it'll turn this pump on and pump water to the, the tops of your collectors, and you're all ready to go. There you go. And some people say that uh, solar is an expensive proposition, but it doesn't have to be expensive. This kind of system uh, can pay for itself in a year or two. It, it all depends on how much work you're willing to do, and so on, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the basic uh, MTD heat storage system using uh, multiple drums.